Okay, today we're going to take a look at how we can use our Windows 11 to connect to our Android smartphone and be able to receive messages, notifications, and even make phone calls directly from our Windows PC. Let's take a look. So one of the first things that we're going to want to do is make sure that our Android device has the link to Windows sharing app installed. So let's go ahead and swipe down, go to settings, we can go to apps, search at the top, and we will type in Windows. And we'll see here, link to Windows service, we can select that. And this is installed on Samsung Android devices by default. I'm not sure about on all Android devices, but you should be able to install it from the App Store if you need to. If you're running a later version of Android, I believe that this is also installed by default, but check your Android device just to be sure. Mine is here and it is running and it is installed. It has the notifications allowed, we can see here. So now that we know that we have it, we can go on our Samsung device. We can go to advanced features here in the middle and we'll see the option to link to Windows. You can select that, and it's gonna start up the setup process to link this to your Windows PC. So this is all the features that you can see. So let's click the blue button to link your phone and PC. Okay, so it is asking for a QR code on your PC. So let's go to our PC. So we're here in Windows 11. We can click on the start menu and just type in your, and you'll see the your phone app. We'll select that. Okay, so once the app opens, it's going to give you a preview of the things that you can do just like it did on the phone. Let's click get started. And here we will need to sign in to our Microsoft account. You will need to have a Microsoft account to do this. That is how the linking works and how things get sent back and forth and how all the authentication works. So if you've got a Microsoft account, go ahead and click on sign in. If you don't have one, that's fine. You should be able to select the option to create one. So you should get a pop-up like this and we can go ahead and sign into our Microsoft account. I'm going to be using my personal account, so it will be blurred out. So once we're signed into our Microsoft account, we can go ahead and pair our device. So on the phone, we should still have the option to a QR code. Select the check mark for I have the your phone companion link to Windows app ready. And then go ahead and click on the blue pair with QR code button. And then also on your phone, select the option to continue and allow the your phone companion to take pictures only this time. And then we can go ahead and we can scan our QR code. QR code scanning was pretty quick. And we can see here that we get a notification on our machine that there was a new sign in detected. And we can set up our app permissions in the app on the phone. So let's go ahead on the phone and select continue. And that gives us a notification to check our computer. In the computer, it changes to you're all set. Our devices are now linked. Click done on the phone and click continue. And welcome to the Your Phone app. Such a strange app name. They could have named it something a little bit better than this, I think. But pin to the taskbar. Yes, I would like that. And we'll go with get started. 
And we can see here we have in our phone, the TechWorks Windows 11 machine has been added. Our Microsoft account is there. We can use mobile data and link to Windows is turned on. So our phone is connected. If we go into the TechWorks Win W11 machine, we have a couple options. We can disconnect or we can remove the device from the phone. Uh, convenient from here, if you have a work laptop or a laptop that you've gotten rid of or sold, you can easily, you don't need to have the laptop to disconnect it. You can just go here and you can disconnect or remove the device from the phone. We can see we have our phone information at the top left, the phone name, the Wi-Fi strength, the cell service strength, the battery percentage, and which types of notifications and options are enabled. So right now we see that our notifications, we need to open the settings on our phone in order to allow notifications. So once we select that button, we can see that we can now see the notifications that we are getting on our phone and they match the ones that we have on our phone. So there's a, an authenticator, there is an email, and there is a clock for an alarm. So at the bottom left, we can see our settings. And from here, we can change what we want to do. So my devices, we can see our phone. We have the features that we want. So one of the cool features that I like about this is uh, cross device copy and paste. I like to turn this on. So this will allow us to transfer content that I copy and paste between my phone and my PC. So if I copy some text from my PC and I can paste it to my phone and vice versa. We can select which notifications we get and where we get them and then turn on app notification banners in the Windows settings. This I like, so we can choose which notifications we get and from what apps. And that is the slide out banner that we would see here for which applications we want to get the slide out. So if we don't want some of these apps to have a slide out notification in Windows, then we just turn it off. And then we have our messages. I'm going to leave all of these on so we can see our text messages, our media messages. We can receive attachments from our phone to the computer so that we can see if someone sends us a picture or something like that, that will show up, show the notification banners and show the badge on the taskbar. Photos, so we can see the photos and then we can allow this app to delete photos from my phone. Now, if you have multiple users on one account in Windows, maybe you've got kids or something that are also using the same computer, you might want to disable this, some of this stuff. You don't want your kids to be able to delete photos from your phone or even maybe see text messages, so on and so forth. I'm the only one on this machine, so I'm going to leave this all enabled. And then at the bottom, allow this app to make and manage phone calls. This is a good feature. If you have a good headset and a decent connection via Bluetooth to your laptop or your PC, you can make phone calls using your headset through Windows, through your phone. So it's a little more convenient with a, you know, a, a decent headset and it will ring on your machine. You can answer them. You'll get a pop up notification on your screen here and you can answer your phone and you can hang up calls as well. For me personally, uh, I disabled this because it was a little bit inconvenient. The way the phone app worked was a pop-up I'll bring up a picture of it here but it was a pop-up and if you X'd out of the pop-up by accident it would disconnect your call and that was happening often to me so for me it just came down to a personal preference um, also my Bluetooth connection wasn't very strong to my phone and the Bluetooth audio quality from my headset which is wireless to my computer which is wireless to my phone, which is over Bluetooth. It got a little sketchy. Since then, I've gotten a new Bluetooth adapter and I've got a wired headset. And from what I've tested, it works fairly good. So enable this if you want to or disable it. That will be up to you.
So we can see here on the left, our navigation panel. Let's go to personalization here and we can see, we can see the wallpaper matches my phone. So for personalization, there's not a ton here. And the wallpaper just shows the picture of your wallpaper on the left panel here. If you enable it, not really much of a personalization. And then you have your troubleshooting and feedback and about. So this is going to show your version and any updates you need. So we can go over to the left panel and we can select our notifications. Don't have any at this time. We can see our messages. We can send and receive messages from here. Okay, so these are going to be blurred out. These are my personal family and friends. So we won't be able to read any of that. Okay, and if we go to photos, we can see all of the photos from the phone. They will sync up and link. You should be able to right click on them and open them, copy them, save them, share and delete. So you should be able to open a, f a photo, save it, share it just like you would with any other item on your computer. And if we click on the phone there, we can see that on our actual phone, we'll get a pop-up to start recording or casting with your phone. And we can say start now. And then we get to the apps. Okay, so you can right click on them and you can pin them to your taskbar in Windows 11. And then you can also open your phone screen and mirror your phone and see what's going on with your phone. So let's take a look at one of the apps here. Let's go with good old Canadian Tire. Okay, so I've switched over to my Windows 10 machine. I was having some issues with the Windows 11 machine that I was on, but I don't have any trouble on Windows 10 here with the same app. So we can see here, it's the same app with all the same features, copy and paste, my device, general personalization. We get notification, don't have any on the phone right now for apps. Works just as well. So we can, let's say, let's open up, uh, let's open up Canadian Tire. We click on it, loads the screen, and there we go. We can use our mouse to scroll up and down. We can select, and it's just basically emulating the screen on our phone. So when we get a pop-up, we will get a Windows notification and a quick response from out of there as well. And then we can click on this button here on the phone and it will pop up our actual phone screen. And we see exactly our phone screen here. So we can open up our apps on our phone and we'll be able to hear the audio through here and do all the stuff from here. So I hope this has helped you out in getting your Windows machine connected to your phone. Let me know in the comments below if you had any trouble in Windows 11 like I did. I could get most of the things to work. The only thing that wouldn't work was the screen on the phone and, this, and the apps. And I believe that's because my Windows machine doesn't have a very good graphics driver. It's actually a virtual machine. So we can see here, my Windows 11 is a virtual machine. I don't think it has the graphical power to run the app screens and the phone simulation screen or the, the, um, the phone casting, the mirror. So that's probably why it's not working. And it works perfectly fine in my Windows 10 machine environment. So I hope this has helped you out some way. Let me know in the comments below if you had any trouble with it and any questions, maybe I can help you out. Thanks for watching. Bye.